I have five questions here. I'm going to answer them very quickly and basically refer people to various resources. The first one is, the, what is the status of carbon credit fund implementation for gender-related projects? Um, we know of a couple. Um, first of all, the Green Belt Movements Project, was, which is a partnership with the World Bank. It's an emissions reductions project, uh, $1 million, I think, or something more, maybe more. Um, so that's one of them. Um, the Green Belt Movement is also f um, partnering with the Lambie Fund of Haiti, which is one of the alliance partners. And in Haiti, um, they're also doing a tree planting project that they're trying to uh, uh, use as a carbon offset project. I've also just heard, um, I had a conversation last week with the head of, uh, what, the vice president of the Chicago Climate Exchange, which is one of the, big, the biggest carbon uh, exchange groups. They're funding a, a large project in Kerala in India um, that aggregates a lot of carbon offset projects. And then uh, there might be others under the CDM. So um, the best thing is to actually look, on, look up the clean development mechanism online and see what other projects are there. I believe the Global Environment Facility Small Grants Program may also have something. Those are the places to look. Oh, alternative energy um, projects. Um, could you give me an example of how to build relationships between women officers and governments and um, civil society organizations? I'm going to refer you to um, an organization called WOCAN, w Women Organizing for Change in Agriculture and Natural Resources Management. That's W-O-C-A-N.org. Um, they're based on this model of partnering women, professional women in natural resource management institutions with civil society women and rural women's networks. And their whole idea is that it's important for rural women's networks and women in civil society groups to learn from and, and share their information to professional women and vice versa. So it's this exchange. And so um, if you look on that website, wocan.org, that's a, a great example of this. Um, what is the extent of the involvement with the CGIAR centers, um, CGIAR centers that have work on climate change? I don't think we've explored that yet with the Alliance, um, and I, I understand from the rest of the people here that there hasn't been work on that. But also I would refer you to WOCAN, which is an agriculture organization that works with that, and so we're, that's probably the link there. Do we have a set of indicators for monitoring and evaluating climate change adaptation or general guidelines? The um, the, the Global Gender and Climate Alliance is working on this, as I mentioned before. However, there's a lot of um, guidelines on gender and disasters, uh, both through the Gender and Disasters Network, also through UNDP, uh, United Nations Development Program's eight-point strategy, and I believe Minakshi is here from, uh, uh, that's, that can tell you about that. Um, and then um, I would also re uh, refer you to ISDR, International Strategy for Disaster Reduction, which also has guidelines on that. And lastly, um, what strategies at the global, regional, and national level to empower women to understand the underlying causes of climate change? I'm a little bothered by this kind of like back, uh, we're standing up here in the panel and talking at you. I'd, I'd really like to sit down with all of you <laughs> um, and really kind of have a discussion instead of having this back and forth. Um, and I'm wondering if, the, could I have a show of hands of people who would, if we were to organize through the Alliance, regional trainings or regional discussions and um, information sharing on gender and climate change in each of many regions. How many people would be interested in that? Would attend a training or basically, you know, get all of these things um, in a more detailed and comprehensive form so that you feel like you can go out and talk about gender and climate change? Excellent. Okay. We're going we're gonna to organize that so you get, we'll get back to you on that. Thanks, Rebecca. Uh, we also received two questions on um, disaster management and disaster risk reduction. Both questions are really for the panel tomorrow, so I will just uh, keep them here and pass them on to our colleagues um, for tomorrow, if that's okay. Um, Irene? I have a question here. What are the major impacts of the reproductive and productive roles of men and women in climate change? Um, I was wondering if the uh, if the author of this question means uh, or is looking for the differentiation between the impact of men and women in their different roles on climate change, if that's the case. Um, what we've already mentioned, and I think Hannah also men uh, went into it, the different uh, causes of climate change, uh, which are, are human-induced, uh, are of course not in the major productive sectors, but also in uh, production, in local production issues, but uh, like 
but major elements which contribute to uh, climate change are um, the transport sector, industrial sector, household sector, energy use, but also uh, land, use, uh, land use patterns, which are often uh, induced at a higher, not at local level, but they are promoted from, and decisions are being made at higher levels. So I don't think it's the men and the women, local men and women who make decisions on climate change impacts, but it's the, it's the policy environment and the, uh, the business environment and the economic environment which really contributes to the productive um, impacts or, on climate change. The reproductive impacts, uh, if the person means uh, the number of people we are we are, or, or, or our population, um, of course, population issues are, uh, haven't been mentioned in this context as yet. Uh, two weeks ago, there was a major meeting in Lyon, in uh, Paris, on um, the, uh, of the, in which also UNFPA was present with many NGOs. And they also talked about climate change. Um, it, there it was underlined again and again that uh, it's so important to, under, to give women uh, the choices to make in, in this area and in their reproductive roles. The educational roles are crucial and that has been mentioned and the consumers' roles and that has been mentioned already before by my colleagues. But the question again is not completely clear to me.